Okay, so now we have our new document. So the first thing I'm going to do is deal with the background. So the song that I chose is The Chain by Fleetwood Mac. And so I'll just play you a little bit of that so you can hear what it sounds like. So that's my song. So it's kind of dark, kind of mysterious sounding. So a white background isn't really fitting the theme of that song. So down here and up here are our color controls. Here we can change the RGB values separately by either dragging or typing them in. If you put them all to zero, that takes away all the light and gives you black. The maximum is 255. So 255 of any one of these is going to give you the most intense version of that color. So this is the most intense red you can get. Down here, this is telling you what intensity of red is actually going to print off. Um, so let's put them all up. And as you guessed, if you do all 255, that'll give you white. So I'm going to use some black, nice and cheerful to start off with. And maybe just go with gray. So if you want to get a gray, just pick the same number three times and that will give you a true gray. So you could pick 75. Oops. And that gives you a very dark gray. See how this one back here is the one changing now? Um, if you click on it, that'll pop up the gradient. So you can use that as well. Um, if you double click on these ones, it'll give you the gradient too. So here, if I want to stick in the grays, if I stay right along this edge, that will continue to give me grays. So notice how the RGB values here are all 154 now. But I'm going to stick with a darker gray, a little bit lighter than maybe the current one, just a bit. Okay, so now I have black and dark gray. So why do I have two colors? Well, if I go to this bucket tool, our paint bucket tool, and choose the gradient. I'm going up here, there's different kinds of gradients. So this is a linear gradient. So here it kind of shows you what it will do if you were to drag your uh, mouse cursor just sideways. Starts off black and gets more gray. I started off the page, so that's why there's less black. If I started on the page, there'd be more black. And I can drag that for as far as I want. I can go right off the page. The wider you make it, the softer the gradient. The closer together you make it, the harder the gradient. There's also different options for what kind of gradient you want. I'm going to try out a radial one. And if you hold down shift, that gives you straight lines. Okay, so I want it to go the other way. I want the gray in the middle. So if I go down here and click this arrow between the colors, and do it again, I'll hold shift. I want it to be bigger this time. Okay, so there we've got that. Yeah, that'll be good. So there's a the background, but it's kind of still a little bit flat, so I think I'm going to add some texture to that. So what I'm going to do, first I'm going to duplicate this background there. So if I grab this, hold down on with my mouse, and drag it down to this one with the folded up corner, this is going to copy that layer. Now and I wanted to do that because lots of times you can't um, do a whole lot with the background. It just kind of stays there and you can't move it up to add different effects. So I just like to copy the background just so I can use it that way. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to get a parchment texture. So I've already found this online and if you do find files online make sure that they're really really big. Like this one was almost 3,000 pixels tall just so that it's a good quality to get on our high quality print. So what I'm going to do is go to open and I'm going to open it with Photoshop. If Photoshop doesn't pop up on your list here, go to choose program and find it that way. Okay, so now we have it open here. I'm going to select this whole thing. So you can either use the selection tool and you can choose different 
shapes that you want to select with. Um, I'm going to use the rectangle. I'm going to start above and outside of the top corner and drag to right to the other side like that. If you wanted to use a keyboard shortcut um, to deselect, hit Control C and that gets rid of your blinky lines. So if I had done that wrong and only gotten like part of it and I wanted to do it again, I can do Control D. And to select everything in a layer, you can also hit Control A or Control All, or I mean select all. So then I'm going to copy it. You can also use Control C and go back to my original document. You see that the different documents you have open here um, just pop open in different tabs. So you can have more than one thing going at a time, though that might slow down your computer eventually. So I'm going to paste our parchment on here and see how, even though it was almost 3,000 pixels tall, because of how high res our file is, that 300 pixels per inch, um, it still seems smaller. So I'm going to stretch it a bit, and you can get away with stretching things a bit, especially if you're just going for kind of a faded background. Um, so what you can do is hold down Control and hit T. And that opens the transform, so Control T. And then you can drag your corners. Now if you want to keep it the same size, uh, the proportion is the same, so it doesn't get stretched all weird like that, um, you can hold down Shift and that will constrain the proportions. I'm going to go right off here, make sure everything is covered. And once you're happy with where it is, hit this check mark up here. Okay? And that will set your transformation. So why did I just completely cover up my original gradient? I'm going to try some layer blending to see what kind of effects I can get when I combine this parchment texture with my background copy. Okay, so before I do that, I'm just going to rename my layers. So I'm going to right click, or you can double click, right on the text there, and I'm going to rename this one parchment. And it's a really good idea to start naming your layers early, just because you can get up to like over 50 layers in some cases. And if you don't have them labeled, it's a really tough time trying to find the one you're looking for. So back to our effects, or our blending modes, I mean. First, you can change the opacity. So if I down the opacity, more of the gray and black gradient starts coming through. But that's just kind of dull and boring. I don't think I like that very much. So I'm going to change it from normal. I'm going to check out a few different effects. Let's see what multiply does. Okay, so there you can see a bit of the te parchment texture coming through where the gray is. And then the black just kind of blots it out. Um, we do color dodge. Ooh, that's kind of cool. And again, you can still mess with the opacities of these ones too. And test out different effects. Overlay. Linear light. So as you can see, you can get a whole bunch of different kinds of effects with these different blending modes, and they're lots of fun. You can get all kinds of things happening. So feel free to try those out to get the effect that you're looking for. So I'm going to go with the color dodge blending mode. I kind of like the way that that's looking. It's got an interesting effect, kind of ominous already for my song. So now we're going to work on adding some text. So here, our little T here, that is our text tool. So if you click on that, it's going to launch it. And you should get this little cursor with a box. Now you can either just click and start typing, or you can drag a rectangle for an area that you want to type within. So like if you had a few words that you wanted in a specific section, that's when that would be a good idea. Um, if you accidentally create a layer that you don't want, you can just go over here, click, hold, and drag it down the garbage bin. Okay, If you drag it over this, it's going to copy it, and then you'll have two of them to delete. So I'm just going to click, and I think that the first word in my song that I want to use is um, I can. I'm going to say I can first. I'm going to start with I can still hear you saying. Ah, so this text is really not what I'm looking for for this 
um, layout, so that's perfect. I'll change everything. So you can highlight it. Up here is where you control the color of your text. So you just click on that, and a little cursor comes up. So I could draw from any of the colors in here if I wanted to. So maybe I'll pick black to start. Black could be good. So now we have black text. And it's also too big. So you can either go in here and select a preset, or else you can drag sideways on these T's. And that'll adjust the size as you drag. So I can is not really the most important words. So I'm going to make those smaller. And then I selected just the um, selection tool instead of the text tool now. So with this tool, you can just kind of grab whatever's on your layer and move it around. So I'm going to put this I can up here. If I went on my parchment layer, I could grab that and drag it around. I don't want to do that. Um, if I wanted to put that back, I could go edit, undo, move, or else I could just hit control Z. Keyboard shortcuts will be your best friend. If I wanted to undo something more than once, so like if I wanted to do two undos, so if I move that, then I move that. If I go to undo, and then I try to undo again, it says redo move. So instead of doing undo again, I'm going to go to step backward. And that will do my second undo for me. A little bit confusing to get used to, but it works. Okay, so I threw this together quickly. As you can see in my layers, I started new layers of text every word or couple words. So, for example, if I want to move around my hear you, um, I have my selection tool selected, I can just drag that part. It doesn't have to move everything else. Um, so this is clearly not perfect and <laughs> requires some work. If I wanted to go in and align things, like if I wanted to align my I can with the word break, which I don't, but if I did, you can get drag from your rulers and then onto the page where you think you want it to line up and that will give you a guide. If you cannot see your rulers, go to view rulers. If you cannot see your guides, go to view show guides. And there's your keyboard shortcut, control semicolon. Um, you can also drag them from the top. If I want to see if those were lining up. Yeah, pretty close. One th other thing that I want to show you right now is how to change your font. So, Times New Roman doesn't really suit my thumb. Again, go for the interesting fonts. We have Adobe, we have lots of them. Whatever you do, do not use Comic Sans, or French Script, or Curls, or Bradley Hand, and that's all the ones I can think of right now. But avoid those ones, because they are very, very overused. Um, so I'm going to try to find one. I could even go for something gothic, probably. You know that medieval black letter style. Um, what do I want? Let's look for the Trajan. We'll just use Trajan for now. Still not exactly what I'm going for. But once you, you might want to change your font, find your fonts first, and then you won't have to mess with your layout. Because, of course, all the different fonts will be different sizes. So that is my intro to how you can do this. There will be other tutorials about creating different effects with your text, as well as bringing in some little graphics. So be sure to check those out. They'll be on the assignment slash on the Moodle as links. But this should give you a good start. Okay, thanks guys.